I'm Roxy Lang. Welcome to Children's Church on Thursday, March 25th, 2021. The days are just flying by very, very, very fast. And a wonderful, beautiful, sunny day the Lord has given us today. And it's just so wonderful that the Lord gives us new days to enjoy and new days to thank Him for all that He does for us. And a new day to just to start afresh each and every day. So we thank the Lord and then we sing His praise and we just thank the Lord for everything that he does in our lives. And did you remember to thank Jesus for anything today? God is so good, and uh, he provides for his people, he provides for his children, and he sent Jesus to be our savior. And today our story is about Jesus dying on the cross, and that's a, and death is sometimes a very sad thing, isn't it? It's a sad thing. Because uh, we miss those people who die that we may not get to see until we go to heaven. Or we won't get to see until we go to heaven to be with them. If that's where they, if they invited Jesus into their hearts, and into their lives, and that's where they're going to be forever and ever and ever. And so it's sad for us, but also it's a happy, joyful time because the person that is leaving, especially when they go to heaven, or only if they go to heaven, that they're going to be happy and excited and just full of the love and joy of the Lord being with Jesus. And that person doesn't even, they have no more pain, no more sorrow, no more cares, no more concerns. And uh, God wants us to just know that when there's our loved ones are in heaven, that they are in a wonderful, wonderful place. And we miss them tremendously. But God says, do not fear. And do not stay grieving because that person is so, so happy when they get to heaven to be with Jesus. So Jesus dies on the cross, and that was his purpose. That was Jesus' purpose for coming to earth, is to die on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could go to heaven to be with him when we die. So that's what our story is about, is Jesus dying on the cross. So let's say a prayer and sing some songs and get into our story today and learn about Jesus' death and uh, dying on the cross. So Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your one and only son. We thank you that Jesus loved us so much. We thank you that Jesus obeyed you, Father God, that Jesus listened to you, that he loved you and he wanted to do everything that he could, that he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forever and ever with you in heaven. So thank you for your mighty love for your people. We thank you, Father God, for forgiveness of sins. We thank you for your gifts and we thank you for your mighty blessings that you bless us with each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So our first song today... <coughs> We haven't sang this one for a long time. It's called Let All Things Now Living, and it's a song that we sang in the, in the hymnals. And uh, years ago, they had hymnals, they had books with songs written in the books, and we had to open our hymnals to sing the, along with the, with the organist who played the organ. And uh, nowadays, they usually have big screens up on the walls that have the music on them, but this was a song that we used to sing out of the hymnal when I was a young girl going to church. So let all things now living, and it was a church, a song that we sang in church on Sundays. <coughs> and it's a song of celebration, and we like to celebrate, don't we? Let all things now living, a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who still guides us on to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, his light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished. As forward we travel from light into light. His law he enforces the stars in their courses 
and sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim him divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing. With glad adoration a song let us raise, till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to God in the highest hosanna and praise. And it's a short, it's, it is a short hymnal song. Um, might have seemed kind of long because you don't know it, but it's a very pretty song to sing. I think it's a pretty song to sing. And uh, that was one of my, one song that I really like to sing in church um, about God and, and just praising Him, celebrating God's love and and celebrating God's blessings over his people. So next song we'll sing is the wise man built his house upon the sand. So as you can remember, there were two men and one was a wise man and he built his house on a rock because a house needs a, sur a solid foundation in order to stand up against the winds and the waves and the all the bad wind and all the bad kind of weather that can come and, and tear a house apart. And the foolish man, he built his house on the sand where there is no foundation. And so wind, wind or rains or, or floods or something heavy comes along from the elements outside, that house has no foundation when it's built on the sand and it can be easily swept away if so, the water gets too deep or if there's a heavy, heavy winds, or even if there's heavy snow, snow gets heavy in the summertime or in the wintertime, doesn't it? And so it goes along with our lives. And we build our lives, which our home, our life, our to the temp we are walking temples of the Lord. And when we build our life on the Lord Jesus Christ, on his word, then this building, this temple, and stand solid and firm. We don't we don't have no foundation. We have no Bible or nothing that's going to keep us anchored to the Lord. And we're we're like that foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when storms come along in life and things happen that we're not so happy with, then we just kind of crumble and fall down and crash just like that house on the sand. So we need a solid foundation to be strong. And that foundation when we build it on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a solid, firm foundation, and we're strong in the Lord. So when bad things come along, we can handle them because we know that Lord, the Lord has given us strength, and we can look to God for all the strength that we need. The wise man built his house upon the rock, house upon the rock, house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And guess what? The rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand fell flat. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the rains come tumbling down, the rains will come down and the floods go up. The rains will come down and the floods go up. The rains will come down and the floods go up. And our house on the Lord stands firm. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And our house on the rock of Christ stands firm. And our life built on the Lord stands strong and firm. So the last song we'll sing is a short, short song. And it's also a Bible verse. And it's First Peter five seven, and that's one of the earliest one of the earliest ones of the Bible verses that I 
can recall learning as he careth for you, First Peter 5, 7. And that's probably because I learned it as a song and it just stuck with me. And it goes like this, First Peter 5, 7. He careth for you, he careth for you, First Peter 5, 7, he careth for you. So God cares for you, he careth for you, and it's found in First Peter 5, 7, a very, very easy Bible verse to remember because it's in a song. He careth for you, he careth for you, First Peter 5, 7, he careth for you. Okay, in our story today, we are in the G's, the Bible stories treasury. And the story is, Jesus is left to die. And what a sad day for all of his friends and family, right? So Jesus, a couple days ago, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, betrayed Jesus and handed him, him over to the chief priest and the next when and Peter he followed him into the courtyard and Peter denied knowing Jesus as one of his best friends and that made Jesus sad but when Peter realized that he had denied Jesus and he felt bad and he cried and he wept because he wanted Jesus as a, his friend well today Jesus is left to die. So Jesus was in the courtyard and Pontius Pilate was there and questioning him about his life and what he believed in and who he was. And, and Jesus told him that he was the king of the Jews. And Pilate went out and he asked is the people, he said, well, should we, what should we do with this Jesus? And the people in the land, they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. And Pontius Pilate said, well, I find nothing wrong with him. And you still want your king crucified? And the people said, he's not our king. Crucify him. And they always, around the Passover time, Pontius Pilate would always, always let their, their practice was to always let one person from prison go free. So he asked them again. He said, well, who do you want to go free? And they hollered out, Bartimaeus let Bartimaeus go free and crucify this Jesus. So Pontius Pilate said, okay, we'll, we'll crucify Jesus. So they put, they gave Jesus a cross. They built a cross for him and they said, carry this cross. You carry your own cross up that hill. And they went to the mountain of Golgotha, also called the skull. So the mountain of Golgotha. So Jesus carried his cross up that hill to be crucified and next to Jesus you can see that there's some more crosses here next to Jesus there were some murderers two more people that they crucified and they were sinners they were they were not very nice people so they hung next to Jesus and guess what Jesus said to them the one of them said you know save us Jesus and Jesus the other guy said you're, you're Jesus. You're this man that we heard about. And Jesus told him, you are going to be with me in paradise. So they hung Jesus on the cross and they took off all of his clothing and they, they passed it around and, and sold it. And they put a crown of thorns on Jesus' head. And on the cross above his head, they made a sign and they said, Jesus, king of the Jews or this is king of the Jews and Jesus hung there and he died and his mom was there and John and some of his friends to see Jesus dying on the cross so that was a sad day for them because Jesus he was a young man at that time when he when he died on the cross and he died on the cross for our sins so let's read what this story says. It says, Jesus is left to die. Jesus' enemies took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman ruler. Pilate asked Jesus lots and lots of questions. Then he said, Jesus has not done anything wrong. I will let him go. No, the people shouted. Kill Jesus, nail him to the cross. 
So Pilate soldiers nailed Jesus. So he, they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet to the cross. And that would be very, very, very painful, wouldn't it? Nailed to a cross. And they left him to die. Jesus knew that he had done what God had wanted. Because Jesus was sent here as our Savior to die for us, that we could be saved and forgiven from our sins. No work, or my work is finished, Jesus cried. Then he died. It says, Jesus, thank you for loving everyone enough to die to save them. Amen. And Jesus had to die. That was, that was God's plan and God's purpose for Jesus coming to earth. He had to die and go to hell and he carried the burdens of our sins. But guess what? Jesus did not stay on that cross and he did not stay in hell. He died on the cross so that he could be raised from the dead. And we're gonna we're gonna see that story tomorrow and days ahead about Jesus being raised from the dead. How do you think Jesus' family and friends felt when Jesus died? Well, we talked about that a little bit earlier, didn't we? We're sad when our families or friends die, aren't we? It's a sad thing when, when we aren't going to see them no more on this earth and we, we're going to miss them so very, very much. And But when they take Jesus into their hearts, they're in heaven and they are so, so happy in heaven. And so it's a wonderful day for them. And if we think about it, then we know it is a wonderful day for them. And we will be there one day to celebrate with them, to celebrate their life in heaven. So that is our story today. And thank you so much for listening and for following along. And Jesus loves you. He loves you so very, very much. And that's why he died on the cross for you and for me. So share and subscribe if you haven't already done that. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll have another day of Children's Church tomorrow.